So writing development is influenced by multiple layers of factors. And here's a big picture or 30,000 uh, feet view. Um, as you can see in the concentric uh, circle, in the center is the students. And, the stu and students vary in many ways, such as temperament, disposition, language, and cognitive skills that they bring to learning. The student is embedded within a family, which varies in resources, language, and literacy beliefs and practices. Family is a part of a community, which varies in multiple aspects, such as language context and language and literacy practices. Schools also vary in student compositions, resources, and instructional approaches. And schools and communities are part of a larger system which differs in teacher education policy and language use policy and etc. So all these factors influence the student's writing development. Students' uh, reading and writing development is a product of interaction between these different layers of environments such as homes, schools, and larger communities and what students bring to learning. Now, recognizing the, um, these multiple layers of factors when it comes to details about the writing process and skills at the individual or child level, there are quite a few theories. In this talk, I'm going to draw from the direct and indirect effects model of writing known as DU. And there's a figure that represents you. As you can see here, this is quite busy and there are a lot of um, components and errors here. If you're interested in detail about this particular, uh, feel free to take a look at the references at the end of the PowerPoint or feel free to reach out to me uh, for resources. Now for this presentation, I am going to use this figure instead. This is an alternative way of representing the same ideas as of you. And let me briefly walk through this. So this is presented in house or building figure because writing development is akin to constructing a house. And the figure has several components, such as roof, beam, um, pillars, and foundational stones. Now at the top or roof are written composition and reading comprehension because they're built on all the other skills and knowledge shown below. Text writing fluency, text reading fluency are placed in the beam that connects the lexical literacy pillar and oral discourse pillar because text writing and text reading fluency act as a bridge connecting the lexical literacy skills and oral discourse skills to written composition and reading comprehension. The two pillars sustain the beam and roof because they're absolutely necessary for written composition and reading comprehension. So think about it this way, if one of the pillars is missing or absent, the building structure does not hold, right? So they are necessary. Lexical literacy skills pillar here include word reading and spelling, as well as handwriting and keyboarding for writing. The foundation that supports word reading and spelling includes print-related immersion literacy skills, such as knowledge and awareness of phonology, orthography, and morphology. The foundation that supports the oral discourse pillar includes higher order cognitions and regulations, such as making inferences, perspective taking, reasoning, monitoring, and foundational oral language skills, such as vocabulary and grammatical knowledge. At the foundation of all these are domain general cognitive skills and executive functions placed at the bottom. For example, working memory attentional control are necessary for the development of phonological awareness, orthographic awareness, morphological awareness, and vocabulary, grammatical knowledge, higher order skills, cognitive skills, and consequently, lexical literacy, uh, oral discourse, and goes on. Now, inside the building structure, there are two constructs and skills. One that is close to the oral discourse pillar is world content and discourse knowledge because these contribute to oral discourse and uh, written composition and reading comprehension and writing text, right, and reading comprehension. Now, the other skill close to the lexical uh, literacy pillar is the social emotions towards uh, reading and writing such as attitudes, um, motivation, self-efficacy, and self-concept. 
and they develop closely interacting word reading and spelling and text writing, text reading skills and experiences, and that's why it's placed there. Now this figure, moving on, shows now both the writing process and skills and knowledge that, uh, the, the, that contribute to the writing process. So the second uh, plane, right, shows the writing process, idea generation, uh, translation, transcription, and evaluation. Now the other planes include the component skills and plane, uh, the component skills and knowledge plane, and social emotion and regulation plane, and domain general cognition planes there. So as you can see, for example, idea generation, when you you know, that process, right, draws on topic knowledge and world knowledge. Now return to, let's, returning to the writing task about your summer, you have to draw on your own experience, right? That's your background knowledge you're drawing on for idea generation. Idea generation also draws on reading skills when you gather and generate ideas using source text. The translation process requires oral language skills. You use your English oral language skills to choose words and construct sentences. As an adult, uh, as an adult who are proficient in English, you might not have con consciously thought about word choice or sentence construction. However, when you're asked to write in a language in which you're not proficient, you might have paused to think about, okay, which words is it? Which word, I'm like, how do I arrange these words to construct a sentence, right, in a language other than English? Now, this interferes with the writing process because now your attention and uh, working memory are expanded to word choice and sentence construction rather than continue to generate ideas and establishing coherence of ideas. Think about how this applies to children or your students. As we know, Students in elementary grades are still rapidly developing their oral language skills, and there are huge differences in oral language skills among students. I also think about its implication for children with developmental language disorder or English learner and English learners. Studies have shown that oral language skills are important for writing quality, and those with developmental oral and language disorder and lower oral language skills or English learners on average have lower writing skills. The transcription process draws on spelling and handwriting or keyboarding. Again, as adults, we have automaticity in spelling and handwriting or keyboarding, most of us are. However, when you do not, it interferes with your writing process. Recall what happened when you were writing using your non-dominant hand, right? Most of you might have struggled with or stroll, uh, slowed down handwriting because you did not have handwriting fluency with your non-dominant hand. Right? Did it impact your writing process? Uh, when I tried, um, I, I had to actually use short, some shorter sentences. You know, in my mind, I had elaborated sentences, but then I had to cut it down because writing is so laborious when you use non-dominant hand. You might have also lost some ideas that you had in your working memory because your attention and working memory are now very much devoted to handwriting. The same is true for spelling. Poor spelling skill would interfere with the writing, spelling, uh, writing process in the same way. So this is what beginning writers experience when their spelling, handwriting, or keyboarding are developing and, not, and are not automatic yet. Studies have shown that skill, uh, spelling skills matter a lot for writing quality and handwriting keyboard influence are important not only for children in elementary grades, but even for those in middle school. So to put it differently, while a writer might have brilliant ideas and can articulate them using precise vocabulary and sentence constructions, the presence of limitations in spelling Handwriting or keyboarding can significantly curtail what can be expressed in their written output. Now let's turn to the bottom of this figure, which describes the nature of relations among the skills and knowledge shown here. So they have three of them, hierarchical relations, interactive relations, and dynamic relations, and I'm gonna go over each of them. <laughs> 